Hello and welcome. My name is Chris Can with Mining Journal, and with me I have Dr. Michelle Michaud Foss, a fellow in energy, minerals, and materials with the Baker Institute at Rice University and Centre for Energy Studies. This is part of a three part series on mining's mineral heartland, stretching from Africa to Central Asia. And today, Michelle and I are going to discuss the need for more from this geographical region. Hi, Michelle. Hello, how are you? I'm all right. Thanks for joining us. Sure. Um, talked about greenflation before. Um, to frame the conversation, can you just give us an idea of exactly what you mean by the term greenflation? It's actually not my term. I wish it was. <laughs> I don't know who invented it, but it is a new invention. Um, we go through periods of inflation, um, and oftentimes they're attached to significant changes taking place in, in various economies. And we have a set of conditions um, going on. We've got um, industries that, that extractive businesses that can respond to signals um, when um, the requirements for, for their product go up, but they're fairly rigid. They can't respond that quickly. Um, what we're doing is we're creating a lot of demand. Um, we already have a robust uh, growth in demand for key minerals and materials. And what we're doing is accelerating that um, with a variety of uh, ambitions around the world um, to deploy alternative technology, um, especially things like electric vehicles, all of which are materials intense technologies um, and and what that is doing is putting some pressure on fairly fragile supply chains now um we've we've had a bit of of relief because of some short-term expansions um mm -hmm. but overall this looks to be a fairly uh, constant phenomena that will be with us um for quite some time okay. So what does it look like if we take the um, the minerals heartland as, as we're describing it um, out of the equation and we're talking about just those supply chains and raw material providers from a country perspective? If we don't add to the current list of suppliers, what does it look like from a supply deficit looking at the demand that's being created by you know, the energy transition? Sure. Well, if you think about this enormous part of the world that I call the minerals heartland. So that is that is that's my my terminology um, from South Africa all the way into Central Asia. Um, it, you think about that chunk of the globe. Um, it is where humans first started to use metals for the most part, um, and it is also where a lot of our supply comes from now. So the question is. Um, is, is that region capable of growing? Um, lots of important occurrences, already mining industry operations and interest, um, but it's a complex geography um, mm -hmm. and it's gonna take a lot to, um, to get the parts of that geography that we're interested in uh, to be able to accommodate new investment, um, which will require a lot. Um, basic infrastructure, mining industry infrastructure, support businesses, um, workforces, proper frameworks, all of that. Um, so it's it's a it's a key part of the world um, in our opinion, in terms of where new supply will come from. Um, we've already seen that happen in many of the individual countries. Um, the question is, you know, how this pattern, how this region will um, perform in the future. Are there some ways of, of linking and leveraging across different countries and different positions and, and supply chains that are already existing? Okay. And you mentioned some of the hurdles there ahead of that development in the minerals heartland. And also when you opened up, you talked about some expansions in traditional providers of raw materials. Is it necessary that we actually need to develop more of the minerals heartland or can expansions in traditional markets, can they cope with the demand levels that we're anticipating? Well, we've got, you know, possibilities. If, if you think about, um, you know, the uh, industrial countries that are that are probably best positioned to be able to um, accelerate the technology that everybody is interested in where where would you get more electric vehicles on the road fastest and so on uh, it'll be the industrial countries um but out of those uh canada and australia are probably best positioned and 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 the question is do you are you able to actually uh grow beyond where your the mining businesses are in those countries now certainly there's a lot of discussion about it um but uh 
you know, we have a we have a little bit of a problem in the industrial world with our backyards, and it seems to creep. Um, so it's it's uh, certainly uh, true within Western Europe. It's true within the United States. It seems to be creeping around a bit um, in Canada and Oz, as we like like to call Australia. Um, and and so when we look at where the faster growth locations are likely to be as well as where the best mineral occurrences are likely to be, the best greenfield projects, that kind of thing. It's not going to be in our countries, we don't think. Um, it will be abroad. It will be in the heartland because that is some of the most appealing of locations. Okay. And obviously, as you pointed out, Michelle, the heartland is a large geographic area, lots of different constituents in there. Are there areas that the, the world should be looking to more than others to really provide a lead on this. And obviously we're looking at Saudi Arabia specifically as putting its hand up saying, we want to lead this. Um, is that what's required to actually get that development moving forward and becoming more significant in terms of you know, feeding into that, into that demand scenario? Well, in, in situations like this, at times like this, um, you need, as we've talked about already, lots of different ingredients, ingredients coming together the right way. So you need a willingness to uh, host investment. Um, we know that some of the African countries are already there. Um, we can see interest in, in countries like Kazakhstan and other parts of Central Asia. Um, the Saudis themselves um, are, are interested. What's been most interesting is the extent to which they would host outbound investment. Okay. Um, and help to enable some of the key investments that will take place in locations that they're interested in in developing partnerships with, um, participating in joint ventures, helping to expand supply chains and so on. And that, to me, is, is really a fascinating piece of the puzzle. We haven't had that. This is a new thing. Okay. So we're talking about their essentially integrated supply chains encouraging and facilitating new raw material extraction and probably feeding into developing industrial centres as opposed to Western or traditional. Yes. And, and, you know, one other thing about the about the minerals heartland, not only is it a big part of the global real estate, um, it's also a big part of demographics. And, and a lot of the customer base of the future is in the region as well. So one of the things that all of these governments can think about is um, selling into developed markets like ours, yours, um, but they can also look at eventually what they're going to be selling into their own markets. Um, from what I can see, uh, the Saudis, for instance, the Emiratis, they're interested in both things. Um, they're interested in being able to develop their own businesses. They're interested in hosting value added manufacturing um processing all of that sort of thing the whole um part of the mining business that we call beneficiation um they want to be manufacturers of of equipment um as part of all of this um but they are not a, they're not averse to investing in those things outside of their own country i think they um they'll have to scrutinize the opportunities just like everybody else um, and and make judgments accordingly, but I think they're interested in doing that, and and so um, I think that has you know appeal to a lot of the countries that are interesting places to look. Michelle, we've got more ground to cover on the minerals heartland, but we'll leave it there for today. Thanks very much for your time. You bet.